So, good afternoon everybody. This is Ernest Sears Jr. with SOS Consulting. I am joining my two really good friends. Uh, we are having a brunch uh, in Scottsdale and uh, I want them to introduce themselves to you and to talk a little bit about their work, what they're working on and how they got started. Uh, I'm John O'Neill. Hi everyone. Uh, so I, I'm a real estate investor. I have a couple of flips going on in uh, Ohio and we invest in California and in the Phoenix market also. And so yeah, we've just been doing real estate for the last, uh, coming up on two years. Uh, just turned 21 and uh, you know, built some great relationships and um, things are looking up. We're picking up a lot of momentum this year. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. What do you got going on? Uh, so I was uh, working with him primarily in wholesaling, which was a really unique aspect of everything because you really have to you know, hustle and fund these properties really quickly and uh, um, you, know, you can't let anyone beat you to the punch and so I was helping him find those, those flips uh, and as of just recently um, I just got my realtor's license um, because I think I'll be able to provide more value that way as well. Um, I also uh, am uh, slowly but surely becoming a day trader, so that's very exciting as well. So, yeah. Excellent. So you guys have a, an amazing amount of experience, and you're experiencing some things that most people in their early 20s have not yet experienced. There's a certain level of accomplishment that I think that um, you can speak to. Talk to us about what is it like to be able to um, make a certain amount of money and to do well and to be surrounded by people that are not necessarily where you are but your same age. How is it like to deal with, with that situation? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's just a funny situation because obviously our friends are you know, in college or uh, you know, they're working you know, part-time jobs or full-time jobs or whatever it is and you know, they make in that range of you know, I'd say you know, fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars a year, and you know, so when you know you make twenty thousand dollars in a month, uh, or big checks like that, they're normal. It's uh, it's it's hard to talk to them about. You can't share that experience with them because you don't want to come off wrong, <laughs> like a, like a, like a jerk or anything like that. Uh, but also, they just don't understand it. So it's uh, yeah, it's, they it's kind a of the situation. They yeah. kind of look at you like. I don't want to say like on a pedestal, but they look at you like you're so far away. Yeah. And when we talk to them, if it's not just in something that's relatable to them, they, they don't understand. They don't. They don't get it. Um, a big thing is um, how we spend our off time is it's like reading books or educating ourselves, and that's fun to us. It's boring to them. And they they don't they don't associate that. So it's like we're still able to be friends with them but maintaining a close daily relationship with them is almost impossible because we just don't jive, you know? What's like, what do you want to do Saturday night? It's like, well, I would like, I'd love to find another house to buy. And they're like, you know, let's go to, let's go to Jimmy's to get here. Yeah, it's, it's a different, you know, it's, it's fun. We have time off. It's not like it's always 24 seven work, but we still celebrate birthdays and sometimes we'll take a weekend off, but uh, it's just, the daily lifestyle is what changes, you know? Yeah, exactly. So, um, well, tell us a little bit about what do you think about your upbringing, your formative years, some of the major experiences in your life? What about those things have caused you to have a different mindset and to maybe be more visionary, more future-oriented? What, what has caused you to be this way? What do you attribute it to? So, there, I'd say it's twofold. One would be... We grew up with a lack, and so I don't know how it happened because we're so young, but instead of me saying that was why I couldn't make it, that was actually the reason why I said I want the opposite, so I just ran away from it. Yeah. And then when I was like 15, I watched uh, The Secret on Netflix, and I remember sitting in my bedroom by myself, window shut, everything down, driving my Cadillac in my head, and I was just doing the mind exercises. and. Um, just taking little steps like that, we started realizing that we were like numbers people and we started researching what is Walmart worth? 420 billion. We started realizing these big numbers and they're just numbers. And we started talking about making billions and doing these things and reverse engineering. Well, how do you get there? And we found out you study rich people and they provide value and they have something systematized. And um, 
we started networking a lot and, and meeting people where these things were attainable. The work was hard, but it was there. And so, you know, when we're young, I mean, I guess I've always been an entrepreneur. In second grade, I sold rocks that I picked up in the in the field that we all played on, and I sold them. So, I mean, maybe it's just in our blood. We always asked a lot of questions when we were younger yeah. too. Um, always asking questions. And yeah. I'll, I'll never forget this: our aunt or uncle, and in terms of our family, they're very wealthy. Um, you know, he was a general contractor. He built schools and hospitals and all that good stuff. And we were in fifth grade, I think it was. We had a conversation with them, and my aunt walks up to my mom and she says. Uh, we just had an adult conversation with your uh, fifth fifth grader sons. And I'll never forget that. And they said their ability to retain information and bounce back and forth was just uh, unparalleled to anything they've ever seen with kids like our age. And I think we, I attribute that to our ability to ask questions and just listen for years and years and years. And that's all we did. And so then when we get to a point to where you know we sit down with someone at lunch or whatever, we can we can go back and forth. It doesn't matter if we're only 20 and they're 105 with all this information. Um, uh, learning how to listen was huge when we were younger. So. Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. So, um, well, talk a little bit about what you're looking to do. What is your vision uh, for your lives? And I know that I've been speaking to both of you and it seems that you're sort of uh, connected to the hip. And no matter what you do, you kind of do it together. I think that is a is a combination that's just priceless and uh, something that most people don't have. So, um, what is the ultimate vision you see for yourselves? Where do you see yourself in five years, uh, ten years? What's what's happening? Um, I have I have Wall Street on the horizon, uh, not in the normal sense. I actually want to take down Wall Street because I think what they do, uh, specifically in retirement funds, I want to create one of the largest and most uh, successful hedge funds that actually gives people real retirement accounts. If the market's down, like in 2008, if it's down 50%, my clients are safe. Uh, that's important to me. Um, and that's, I love financial markets. I love reading all that boring economic news. I love all that stuff, interest rates, you know, all that stuff. Um, I, I love that. So that's on my horizon. Five years from now, I should have uh, a seven-figure trading portfolio um, to where I'll start uh, you know, multiple businesses and business partners so I can start hitting the hedge fund direction um, and uh, keeping God first the whole way and making sure that you know our returns are good, they're safe, and uh, you know, that everything is done transparently. You know, not, oh, this is our fees and we're going to slip in all these other, other fees. Like, I want to be able to be it so uh, my company doesn't make money off the fees. We make money, I already make my money. I don't need your money to make money. And so, with that being said, I get to provide more value to everyday working people and when they're ready to retire instead of you know having seven hundred thousand dollars out of thirty years you know they're gonna have a couple million that's that's what I want to do for people. So. Wow. Um, <clears throat> I don't know that I have a five year goal. My goal has been by the time I'm thirty I want to make enough residually that I would never have to do a deal again. But I get to do the deals I want to do. And that, that's my financial goal. Um, I probably should take some time to figure out some non-business family-oriented goals. Um, I mean, like traveling and stuff like that. But um, in, in business, I, as soon as these next couple of houses are done, I, I'm gunning for owning a 100-unit-plus apartment complex as fast as I can. And that's in my sights right now. So actually, I actually have two of them in the pipeline. We're trying to jumbo along them together. And it'll be like a six million dollar acquisition, so we're waiting to hear back from the bank actually on that this month. So um, that's that's kind of in my my sights is to just um, I want quiet wealth. You know, I, I don't want to flash it. I want to be able to mm -hmm. take a month off if I want to. Yeah. Not that I would. I don't know if I'll ever stop working. Right. You know, but I, I love what I do. In um, the ability is, I guess, what that that, that is. And, um, and that's kind of what I'm going for. Steven loves trading. I'm not really interested in it. Um, you know, I want the apartment complexes. I like flipping houses and stuff like that. So um, right now, that's kind of where I'm focused. Mm -hmm. It'd be just apartment complexes right now after these flips are done. And uh, that could change. I could add more to it, but mm -hmm. that's all I got my eyes set on right now. So that's awesome, man. Yeah. So what? Finally, what kind of advice would you give uh, others that are 
wondering where to go next, people around your age who are trying to figure out what to do with the rest of their lives, what kind of advice would you give them at this time based on things that you've learned? Um, uh, two things. One is, uh, I heard this quote the other day and it was uh, uh, this guy talking to another guy who said, hey man, do you remember the guy who gave up? And he's like, no. And he's like, well, neither did anyone else. So no one ever remembers those guys. Not that being remembered is important, but you know, being great is just about not giving up. The second is uh, my current paradigm on life, which is uh, you need to be at bat as many times as possible because you, know, you may strike out a hundred times, but man, sooner or later you're gonna hit a grand slam and the game changes uh, forever. You know, he could put a hundred offers on different apartment complexes and only one needs to say yes and you're on paper, man, you're, you're good. So, I mean, it's just about uh, having that that mindset, just, just go, just go, just don't stop. That's, that's what I would say. Yeah, I think, um, I have people ask me that a lot, where do I start? And um, I always tell them, you can't spend enough money on educating yourself. And um, there's a lot of, like in real estate, for example, there's a lot of courses that say 20,000 here, 30,000 there, and, and I, as much as I tell them, Yes, that's valuable. There's there's ways to learn for free. We'll just say that to start. But I mean, if you want to shorten the learning curve, that's what those companies are for. And so if, if, if that means going into debt and put pinning yourself into a corner and be like, I gotta pay off this thirty thousand dollar credit card for this education I learned, you make it work. And if you, you know, if by the time it's paid off, you don't like it, then you can decide if you want to keep doing it or not. But um, I remember when I had to pay for education. I was just cruising. I was just be, I was very uh, comfortable in my entrepreneur journey. And when I took on some debt and had to work and had to hustle, it was different. My work le my work level changed, and I worked harder because I had to. Yeah. And I wasn't comfortable. So um, you know, educate yourself. Talk to people. And the second thing was don't ever take advice from someone who's not doing what you're doing. So if you want to learn how to golf, don't ask Michael Jordan how to golf. And that was huge. So if they don't have the bank account you want, don't listen to them for advice. If they don't have the relationship you want, don't listen to them for marriage advice. And so that's huge. I don't go to my mom for business advice because she doesn't flip houses. I don't go to Steven for business advice in, in a realm outside of Forex because that's what he's good at. So make sure you're surrounding yourself with where you want to be too. So that's that would be my two piece. Excellent. Well, yeah. there you've heard it, folks. They've given some amazing advice. Number one, you have to persevere. You have to stick to your goal and, and don't give up. Number two, uh, you really need to have mentors. You have to have people that are where you want to be. Uh, get with them. Ask questions. Uh, and also, you need to spend time in self-development. It is not a bad thing to invest in yourself. You have to invest in yourself. You are your biggest asset. So uh, thanks so much, guys, for talking to me today. Uh, those of you that are looking, um, click on one of the links below if you want to uh, check me out on Instagram. I'm on dream underscore coach. Uh, if you want to get me on Twitter, I am at uh, SOS underscore consulting underscore. And, of course, you can email me at info at SOS consulting.org. There you have it, folks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.